Welcome to the Yoga of Healing and Awakening Summit, a free online event where you'll discover essential depth teachings and daily practices for your mind, body, and soul. Share these visionary masters and esteemed practitioners with your friends and family, and join us on Facebook at The Shift Network. And now your host, Philip Helmick. Hello, everyone, and welcome back. I'm Philip Helmick, the director of Peace of the Shift Network, and we are in for an incredible, blessed experience here. Um, I am so delighted to have Larry Payne, Dr. Larry Payne, here with us, and we're going to be talking about yoga for midlife and beyond. And so I'm going to say a little bit about Larry and uh, welcome him formally. Larry is, he's special. <laughs> I just have to say, He's been studying and practicing yoga for over 40 some years, and we'll learn more about that. How much, how much you need, Phil? <laughs> <laughs> well, well let, me, let, me, let me do the, the, the thumbnail sketch here. The thumbnail sketch is Larry's the founding president of International, Associated, you know, International Association of Yoga Therapists and co author of the new revised Yoga for Dummies, as well as a Yoga Therapy and Integrative Medicine. Yoga RX, the business of teaching yoga. He's also the co founder of the yoga curriculum at the UCLA School of Medicine and director of the Yoga Therapy RX and Prime of Life Yoga certification pro program at Loyola Marymount University in Los Angeles. And Larry and I were just talking before we got onto the call. If you go to his website, Samata, S A M A T A dot com, Samata, S A M A T A dot com, and go look under about, look the photos of Larry with Western yogis and then Eastern Indian yogis. And there is such a rich, rich life that Larry has been living. Um, Larry, let's, let's establish a little bit. I mean, you, you've, you've studied in India for years. Um, what, what, how did you first get started in, in studying yoga? What, four or five decades ago? And what took you to India? Well, it's almost four decades then. Uh, what happened? is that at one time in the, in the uh, 70s, I was the West Coast manager of advertising sales for McCall's Magazine. <laughs> that was a whole other lifetime. And um, I kept you know, getting back problems. And uh, my uh, running partner dragged me to a yoga class. And fortunately, it was a kind older woman. She was a disciple of Indra Devi. Hmm. And so I watched what they were doing, and I said to her, I can't possibly do that. And she said, just do what you can, and you'll get a surprise, you know. So um, I did that. And at the end of the class, she had a long shavasana. It was probably like 12, 15 minutes long. And I woke up, and for the first time in almost three years, this pain I had in my low back was like a dog bite all the time was gone and I also felt very high, just high. Mm. And it lasted for four hours. So I said, I'm in. So I got a yoga teacher close to where I lived. His name was Raghavan Das, Solomon Delgado. He was a disciple of Shivananda. Mm. So I studied with him for about a year and um, he um, would have juice fast on the weekend. And then he said, well, if you really want to do a good one, there's a place where you go called Meadowlark in Hemet, California for two weeks. So I went and there was the father of holistic medicine in America, Dr. Everett Loomis, who was my first holistic mentor. And in that two weeks, I realized that I did not want to be in advertising anymore. And I wanted to be either yoga, healer, hand, something. And he gave me his list that he had gone around the world with to use. And uh, when I went to McCall's Magazine to tell him I quit, they surprised me and said, no, we'll put you on sabbatical for a year. That's unheard of in advertising. <laughs> I, was, I was really good, so they wanted to keep me. So when I decided to take the sojourn, which was in 11 countries, um, I had a press pass from McCall's. I would write in a book, you know, and, and hardly anybody turned me down for interviews or any of that. So it was a wonderful ticket. And it started uh, at a place called Findhorn in mm -hmm. Scotland, which is a real spiritual journey place. And then I went to Scandinavia. And then but the big part of it was right in that uh, December of 1979, I went to 
a uh, one-month immersive teacher training in southern India with, Sh- with Swami Vishnu Devananda and the Shivananda. That was the start. Mm. Mm, mm. And, and you've studied with great masters in India and the United States. Um, we were talking a little bit earlier how you went, you know, we were with the, the great teacher uh, Krishna Macharya and then his his sons and yes, guitar. Yeah, it, it, it's just and it, it sounds like all this just organically grew with your deepening understanding of of yoga from these great masters including great masters in, in the U.S. And then you went ahead and um, you've got some advanced degrees. And tell us about those, how you combine like this deep practice together with these Western uh, medicine, Western degrees. Well, you know what's interesting is that when I took this trip and uh, I decided to keep going back to India, I went like four times. And then I followed Deskachar all over the world. So... Um, this was expensive. So I, you know, in advertising, I did well. So I actually, uh, you know, put a, a lien on a house or two and invested something like $350,000 to follow, go to India and all that. And uh, to have this great teaching from the Krishnamacharya Lini's. But at that time, there was absolutely no college in America that had a doctorate or a master's in yoga. Hmm. But they were the alternative schools. And then there was a book by a man named Baird who rated all of them because some of them were just diploma mills, you know. But there was one in Brentwood called Pacific Western University, which had the highest rating. So I went there and uh, they, what they allowed me to do is take a lot of the teachings I had from Christian Macharya, put them into, you know, books and things like that and uh, do projects. And so um, I was kind of a pioneer with that because there was no PhD in yoga at that time. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And, uh, I, you know, some people can find fault with that, but I, I look at it as more of a pioneering thing. Mm-hmm, um, mm-hmm. And, and then um, I continued my study with Deskachar uh, and also with A.G. Mohan, and he was a direct disciple of uh, Krishnamacharya. And also someone who really moved me in my heart was Indra Devi. Mm. And whenever she came into town, I would study with her. Then I got invited to go to South America, you know, and, and teach with her there. Um, so uh, I, I think the main people who influenced me, although I saw, if you go to the website, you see all the people I studied with were a ton, at least met. I was a few weeks with uh, Iyengar, and then I studied with one of his teachers for seven years, you know, a lot. It's, it's a rich background, I really, I have to say. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But when I had been to India four times, I finally decided it was time for me to set up shop and be okay with yoga therapy. And while I was in India, I met Richard Miller. And the two of us started the International Association of Yoga Therapists, which this year will be the 30th anniversary. And Richard and I will be honored that in June in the Marriott Hotel. Okay. So um, when I came back, I, I had the honor of meeting a man who was the premier uh, sports medicine in like holistic integrated medicine place. His name is Dr. Leroy Perry. And he had the International Sports Medicine Institute, <clears throat> which is now called International Sports Science Institute. And there was neurologists, acupuncturists, physical therapists, chiropractors. And he invited me to have the first ever yoga therapy center there. So it was the first one in Los Angeles and really the first one in the United States of that type in a sports medicine. Mm-hmm. And in 1984, the uh, Yoga Journal did a story on us. And that was the first time ever there was a story on yoga therapy in the Yoga Journal. Nice, nice. And in yoga therapy, I mean, and, and it's, it's really grown. I mean, you're, you're you know, you, you've created the curriculum at the UCLA School of Medicine. And so this real integration of modern medicine in Western science and ancient yoga, you've been really at the forefront together with Richard Miller and others of looking at that integration and, and you know, for, for yoga therapy. Could you say a little more about that, Larry? Yes, I, you know, there are a lot of schools, you know, Krishnamacharya was, uh, and Deskachar were yoga and Ayurveda. And I have studied some Ayurveda and you know, our main course is at Loyola Marymount University now where we have the Yoga Therapy Rx. And uh, 
we were one of the very first to have yoga and integrative medicine. So I was influenced by that, by this Dr. Leroy Perry. I think for the future where it's going is yoga uh, and uh, meets modern medicine and psychology, you know, for uh -huh. the future, that's where we're going off. So our school is, in, is, in, is unique that way. But and here's one of the things I want to point out. I love Ayurveda. It's great. And we have it in our course because you have to know something about it. But we lean on the integrated medicine because how many Ayurveda centers are there in California? Total, you know? How many chiropractors? Mm -hmm. 30,000. How many physical therapists? 20,000. Osteopaths? 10,000. You know, these are all people that our graduates can work with. And in addition to what they learn in yoga, if they know how to do what is called soap notes, that's how modern medicine communicates with each other. Mm -hmm. You know, it's a way of describing what happened, whether you were the nurse, the doctor, the yoga therapist, whatever. And uh, the people have these tools. And so I think it makes us unique. And the other thing is that uh, we are with the premier university of yoga studies. Uh, you know, Loyola Marymount University was the first one to have a master's in, in yoga. Uh -huh. uh, there's another school, Maryland University, that has a, a master's in yoga therapy. Uh, but we were really the first. And uh, there, to my knowledge, there's no other schools that are part of this yoga therapy programs that are hooked up with a, you know, like a, a you know, full-on university. Okay, and so I, I want to I want to uh, draw draw out some more distinctions here. I want to draw out some more distinctions about what is yoga therapy, and then what is prime of life yoga. Okay, and sure. Let's, so let's go a little deeper. What if, you know, for someone new to yoga therapy, what what is it in a nutshell, Larry? Um, my teacher Jessica Char put these things in nutshells pretty good. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, you know, if you go to the iayt.org you will see countless pages of definitions of yoga therapy. Okay. But in my opinion, the yoga therapy is about, is for people who don't fit in a group class for whatever reason. It could be physical, mental, emotional. They don't fit in a group class. They need one-on-one -on -one attention. So the technical word is yoga chikitsa. And the general word is chikitsakramas. Chikitsakrama is anybody who works with the whole person in Eastern philosophy. And yoga chikitsa is yoga therapy. Um, so and that's the approach. Okay. Okay. One on one. They do, it doesn't work in a group class. Now, the most common ones you're going to get are muscular skeletal. You know, four out of every five people in the whole United States seek professional help for lower back problems sometime in their life. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay. All right. So you, you start with those things. And then, you know, we have, uh, in the first year, we have the muscular skeletal system. In the second year, we have all the other systems of the body, mm -hmm. nervous system, digestive, circulatory, you know, all of those. And then in the third year, we have what we call a shadow clinic, where they, the students look at the, the teacher who is the expert, you know, working on the uh, a case study, and then afterwards they get to ask questions. Mm -hmm. And in the fourth year, we were lucky enough, uh, uh, and it is our uh, going into our fifth year, with the Simsman Venice Family Clinic, which is affiliated with UCLA. So it's a underserved clinic. So our our graduates go in there with their white lab coats on, you know, <laughs> and they get uh, clients. And there's an integrative staff meeting mm. on Tuesday with. Medical doctor Miles Spar, who's incredible, and then the uh, chiropractic people and the and the acupuncture. We all in the yoga therapy all have a, a interactive meeting, and then they uh, see patients. Nice. And cool. so, so, so all of this is integrated together, and yoga could be part of the therapy. Yeah, I mean, I it was the first time you had like a. a you know, integrated medicine clinic and established one, you know, with a big university that had yoga therapy in it. Nice, nice. Okay, so that's, that's yoga therapy. And if you go to the Samada website, you can see whether there's different 
you know, you can see different therapists. If, if someone wants to find a therapist near them, uh, is that Samada website the best place to go for yoga therapists? Well, for a yoga therapist, it's best to go to IAYT.org. Okay. That's the International Association of Yoga Therapists. But to find somebody in prime of life yoga, uh, also to find a graduate of our school in yoga therapy, you go to samata.com, mm -hmm. okay. dot com, and they have a directory there. Okay. So for the directory. So let's look at the distinction now of prime of life yoga, because this session is about, you know, about yoga for, you know, yeah. older ages. And so what is prime of life yoga and and what was your role in helping create that distinction? Well, if you sit back and look at yoga in America right now, about 80% of the public classes, somewhere in the name it says flow, some kind of flow yoga, flow this, flow that. And this has been a, like a assimilation. And really, if you want to give somebody credit, there's a man named Ganga White who has the White Lotus Foundation, and he hosted both Iyengar and Patabi Joyce at his studio and home. And um, he synthesized their, both of those teachings and made a video called Aerobic Yoga. This is like 30 years ago. And then he changed the name to Flow Yoga. And that is where it really started to give somebody credit. And then that was, that was a simulation of these teachings. But what people don't know is that those teachings were given to people like Iyengar and Patabi Joyce when they were 16 years old. How do you teach a 16 year old? You know, dump, bump, bump, you know, that type of stuff. Also in India, they talk about three stages of life. Shikshana, which means the building stage, that's like eight to 20 something. And then Rakshana, which is the maintaining stage, midlife. And then there is Chikitsa, which means, you know, the therapy. Now in India, that first stage, Rakshana uh, ends much earlier because people get married in their early 20s. By the time they're 40 or 50, they're almost retired. And by 50 or 60, they're in the search of God. In America, at 50, people are on their second or third marriage and around the kids. <laughs> you know, it's a different lifestyle here. So what's happened is that because this flow yoga is so popular, people over 50 go to these classes and a survey over 10 years, you can find on the internet, 29,000 people went to emergency rooms mm. after a yoga class that were over 50. Mm -hmm. because they went to one of these classes and they didn't fit into it. Mm. So it's like, why should you have to stop yoga? It goes flow yoga, then it drops off to chair yoga and restorative yoga with nothing in between. And what people don't know is that same man, Krishnamacharya, who taught Iyengar, Patabi Joyce, and many others, started teaching differently when he got his first ever middle-aged Western male student, Dr. Albert Franklin, who was the ambassador to India. And uh, then he started the teaching differently. And Dr. Franklin blessed my studio, Samata, in the beginning. And so he, he started to make these adjustments and he called it Vini Yoga. Hmm. So Vini Yoga means that you teach to the whole person based on their abilities, um, their education, their psychological, you know, and the breath change, the, the, the focus changes from, you know, perfect form to function. A more of an emphasis on the breath, forgiving limbs, unheard of, forgiving limbs. Are you kidding me? You can soften your leg and you can. And one of the poses that's really a dangerous pose for men is a seated straight-legged forward bend, Pachimottanasana. And every weekend, somewhere in America, there's a guy who's 55 who at a hotel or something goes to his first yoga class, and there's a very gorgeous yoga teacher, and he's sitting with his legs out, and he reaches for his toes, and he tries too hard to keep up with everybody else and throws his back up. Mm. So it's like, you know, 
it's a difference between perfect form, which these young kids learned, and then function. Mm -hmm. You know, you know, if you if you in the yoga for dummies is the only place I ever saw that they said it was okay to bend your knees. But you put up yoga teachers, you put up half the population and tell them to stand straight with their legs and put their head on their legs, they can't do it. Right. Yet people try to force themselves into that. Mm-hmm. So um, we're learning something about this and our, our culture is different than, than India. Okay, all right. And so now you've really, you've really become a central, one of the central figures in yoga therapy and prime of life yoga. And I hope so. Yeah, I mean, well, it's just the joy you have about talking about how you're doing what you love, and 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 you know, and now you've been asked to write a book. Um, I love that you you write these yoga for dummies books. Or, and now tell us about the book that you're going to be coming out with soon. Well, you'll be the first to know. I'm announcing here that um, Wiley Publishing, which I think is the greatest publisher of all of them, for distribution and you know everything. Um, invited me to do a 50 plus yoga for dummies. I had yoga for dummies and we had three editions of it, three revisions. And uh, let me just give an honor shout out to my, the late Georg Feuerstein who invited me to be his partner in the very first one years ago. And uh, his wife, Brenda, who would send out love. Um, and so he really put me on the map with that. And then when he passed away, I did the last one on my own third now this is something that will be totally mine, and um, the, the 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 distribution of the dummies people is incredible, and we are actually going to see if we can have some type of partnership with AARP, mm-hmm. which has ninety million subscribers. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> that would be well, nice. <laughs> well, I, yeah, that would be nice. It'd be great to have your work out there further, and and then also just more of just having out there that there is a prime of life approach to yoga that yes. if you're 50 and above or 45 and above that yoga can meet you where you are for this stage of life. So let's, let's just for people who this might be new for them, please draw out what are some of the distinctions you see of prime of life yoga, you know, um, these, well, first of all, <clears throat> you don't have to do the hard postures to get the benefits. Okay, so we've taken like 20 of the safest postures. And people can ask for that. You know, they just go to my website and, you know, Larry at Samata.com. I'll, I'll send you the copy of it, you know. And there's lots of also, there's a lot of videos there. I'm not trying to plug all that, but uh, the people want that style of yoga. There's six videos that are all in this uh, vein. Um, And uh, uh, so it's like the first thing is you don't have to do the hard postures. The next thing is you can have forgiving limbs. It's okay to soften your arms and legs if you need to. Now, there are some people who don't need to. Fine. But the majority of the population uh, could. And, you know, it really starts to change at age 40. Uh, But there are a lot of people who still are kicking, you know, 40, 45 and the reason I say 50 plus is because that's where you have the most support with websites. And by 50, it really has, people have changed. So that's where they appreciate it the most. But there's still a lot of people 40. There's also young people who just like a, a, you know, a safer approach that like to take. I have people in my class who are like 22 years old and somebody who's 89. And so it's like, you know, it's a safe approach. The other thing is that um, Deskachar and Krishnamachar have taught in this stage, you move in and out of a posture before you hold it. Mm. So all the ones I learned before were just, um, you know, uh, you go into a pose and you hold it. Where this is, you move in and out with the breath, and then you hold it. And what that does is it allows you to go deeper into the stretch. And mm. there's scientific principles, like um, if you move your leg up and down before you hold it in the hamstring stretch, it'll stretch further. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And it's a scientific principle called PNF, proprioceptive neuromuscular facilitation. That's why we call it PNF because it's too hard to say, you know. <laughs> but, uh, and then, um, you know, picking these user-friendly postures, you don't have to do, like I say, all the hard ones. Um, and then the sequence of the postures. 
uh, are important. And like when you're doing a group class, you know, you don't finish off the class with backbends, you know. Um, all of the postures have psychological effects as well. Mm -hmm. So forward bends, side bends, and twists are all calming. Back bends is a category that is exciting. And so there's Ayurvedic terms, two of them. One uh, is called Langana, which means calming. And then Brahmana, which means expanding energy. So you can take that with the poses and you can take that with the breath. Mm. So the, the exhalation phase of the breath is long enough, calming, quieting. And most of us in the U.S. and the world need more of that mm -hmm. than we do the excitement, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, especially in this stage of, uh, of our life, you know. Mm -hmm. um, the other thing is that there's a, more of an emphasis on the advanced breathing, pranayama. Mm -hmm. And also relaxation techniques. Yoga Nidra is a great one from Richard Miller. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, there's more uh, of a focus on user-friendly type postures, more time for meditation and advanced breathing. And uh, I also believe that at this stage that you should do some cardio, actual, you know, walking, swimming, mm -hmm. elliptical, bicycle, those things. Mm -hmm. uh, because you do get aerobic with the, the young and restless yoga, mm -hmm. but in this midlife, it is not an aerobic one. Mm -hmm. So we, I think we need some of that. And also in our courses, we talk about a lifestyle, like the average person takes between two and 7,000 steps a day. So if you know something about the walk, it's just as important as what you're doing on the mat Mm -hmm. off the mat mm -hmm. you know so we help people with biomechanics of walking sitting standing mm -hmm. uh, you know even in the bedroom mm -hmm. so it's like there are uh, you know ways that you can move that are going to make you live longer have a better life and so forth that are just as important as what you're doing on the yoga mat okay in my opinion so prime of life i mean it sounds like it's a whole it's a whole way of being off the mat on the mat and then yes. really, really approaching the Hatha yoga part of it in, in a it's just user friendly way. <laughs> what? User friendly way. User friendly way. Okay. So you're not going to a class and trying to keep up with the 25 and 26 year olds and then cracking. Going to the emergency room. Going to the emergency room and being the one that's carried out on the stretch. No. Uh, <laughs> and, and what kind of transformation do you see in people's life who really embrace prime of life yoga? Well, the first thing is that um, when people come to yoga classes that they, they know that they can do, they feel more accepted. Mm. So immediately there's a sangha. These are people who have found the style of yoga. And I, I always have tea after my yoga classes. So mm -hmm. people sit around and talk and share. Um, I've seen sharing as being something all across the, you know, with the big teachers. Um, so uh, there, there, there's a communion, there's a sangha. Uh, and there's a big sangha with Prime of Life Yoga now. I, I've been doing this about eight years. And uh, there's a really great center in Princeton, the Princeton Yoga and Health Center. Um, there are uh, centers, you know, in San Diego and Austin, Texas, and all the kind of places I've been going and visiting and teaching. Um, so uh, it's spreading. And the more we get online like this, you know, the more they have a chance to, for instance, we're offering everybody a free yoga class called a tour of the joints. Mm -hmm. um, this is the age when you start having problems with your knees, your hips, your back, and all that stuff. So that's where the yoga therapy comes in and, and um, supports people who need that. But the, the class that the, that's there that's free is one that's uh, like all the, the main joints that people start having problems with, knees, hips, low back, upper back, like that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay. So people take advantage of it and use it. Okay. And again, what, what, what's the best website for learning more about Prime of Life Yoga? S-A-M-A-T-A dot com, pronounced Samata. Mm -hmm. dot com mm -hmm. and uh, when you go there you'll see when it says about us you'll see all of those pictures you talked about <laughs> all of those, those pictures 
And uh, then it'll say, you know, like uh, there's a store where you can go and look at a whole bunch of videos, books, that type of stuff. And then it has, you know, the events uh, about the college, you know, where we, and we have people coming internationally to this course in Los Angeles, see flying in from Canada and so forth and so on. Mm -hmm. uh, Cause it's all on weekends. Mm -hmm. And it starts in October and it goes, you know, 11 months. And uh, then, you know, I have a, a long time private practice in Marina Del Rey where people come to see me privately. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay. All right. And what does Samata mean? It means harmony and balance. And when <laughs> I was first studying with Deskachar, I went to the Adyar Library. That's a place in India where they have still have very important documents on, on uh, palm leaves and things like that. And I wanted to, I knew I was going to have a center when I came home and I came back to you when I had two names and I asked him and one was Son Tulan, which sounded pretty cool to me, you know, and the other was Samata. And he said, no, Samata. He said, Son Tulan means like you're balancing on weights or something like that, that kind of balance. Mm -hmm. But Samata means a balance in life. Oh, nice, nice. So Prima Life is really about a balance in life. So we reach this life. We, we do yoga in a friendly way to our body, on the mat, all, and then movements off the mat, and, and then also just lifestyle and in order to have harmony and balance. So, so for folks who are listening, what are just, uh, just in addition, you know, what are some other just few tips that you would have people think about in terms of prime of life yoga? Um, I think that the first thing is don't go to a yoga class that doesn't feel intuitively right to you. Mm -hmm. You know, and a lot of times people don't have choices where they live. So you can go to videos, you know. Uh, the other thing is that um, see about the possibility of a personal practice. And if you have one, just 10 minutes a day is pretty good. Mm -hmm. um, I am available now on Zoom for people from anywhere who want to have, you know, private lessons. That's That's been pretty nice lately with the Zoom. Um, but, you know, if you're, you, it, it doesn't take a big amount, a long time practice, 10, 15 minutes a day, you know. And also, I would keep the cardio in there. Um, you know, your weight is a thing that starts to happen later in life for people who aren't, you know, like watching their food and all this stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, so some type of cardio and um, the other thing is to um, associate yourself with people that make you feel good you know um, life is short <laughs> and uh, I, I've always tried to to do what my main teacher Deska Shar told me to do and he said be an example mm. so I try to be an example of how to treat other people how I'd like to be treated and to do something good in the world. Mm -hmm. You know, I was so happy that I changed my career from advertising to being a yoga teacher. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it, Larry. Oh, what a delight. I love this interview with you. You're a special man. Well, thank you, Larry. It's the feeling is so mutual. It's, it's just always such a delight. And, you know, there's so many questions I have for you. I mean, part of me wants to hear more of these stories about studying with these great masters. Um, is there any story where that really stands out, whether it was uh, with Krish, uh, Krishnamacharya or one of his students, where they really pointed out the need to adjust yoga to the stage of life? You know, in addition well, there, to there was a, uh, not quite that story, but a funny story. It, 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 it was two parts. Okay. Um, you know, when I was traveling in India for the first time and I had my press pass and my camera and my video and you know, my, I mean, my audio recorder, nobody turned me down. But when I got to, to Krishnamacharya Yoga Mandaram, Deskachar comes out and says, you know, my father doesn't do interviews and so forth. He says, but if you want to meet him, if you can wait for two weeks, I'll see what I can do. So in the meantime, he gave me lessons with A.G. Mohan and then later him. And uh, so after two weeks away in India, Krishnamacharya walks out and he was five foot one, but he seemed like he was a giant. And um, he walked around in Jalandhara Banda, which is a pond to keep his energy in. And 
I didn't know the Indian tradition that you're supposed to touch people's feet. That seems weird to us in America, but it's, it's a very common thing you do out of respect to elders or your teacher. So he comes out and I just put my hands together and namaste. And he looked at me like, who in the uh are you? <laughs> around and walked away and that was the end of the interview. <laughs> so the next time I came back, he had broken his hip. Hmm. And he was in bed. He didn't want an operation. So he was in bed and uh, he never got out of that bed. And he had all these straps and things hanging down that he could do his exercises. And he was constantly repeating uh, textbooks that he had memorized from, from a childhood. Um, so um, Deskachar, this time, he asked me if I would do a tribute to him. And I, in America, and I said, yes. So now he brings me in to meet his father. And he told me exactly what to do, how to keep my eyes on him the whole time, touch his feet. And when I left the room, to keep my eyes on him on the way out. And he was like a different person. Mm. So he gave me a 20-minute ceremony, Christian Macharya, <laughs> mm. to bless my venture that I was going to do for him. Mm. That was quite a story. Yes. You know, and I kept those things for a long time. And then... We do have this DVD that is uh, 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 80 minutes that has people like Deskachar in his prime, Indra Devi, and so forth. It's not like watching Homeland because it's 80 minutes, you know, but it has chapters and people can look at it and you can also find that at the website. But it, it's a pretty good one. It talks about Krishnacharya's life. You know, what, what I love about this is here you are, you know, these early years spending time with great masters in India. And yoga is several thousand years old. And then you've been really at the forefront with yoga therapy with Richard Miller and others. And now prime of life in how these masters were helping you understand that yoga can be adapted to these different stages. And so it's, it's really, you know, it's really quite a special place that you're holding right now, Larry, you and others in this prime of life in yoga therapy um, about really helping, you know, yoga came to the West, um, Vivekananda, Yogananda 1920, and it spread around the world, International Day of Yoga. It's really spread and it sounds like it's, it's deepening in its application. And so hopefully people, people, hopefully people listening to this interview are understanding that wow, there's a whole whole area of yoga that I can be exploring, you know, for people who are 45, 50 or above. Um, yeah, it's quite special. Also, though, you, you have dedicated a lot of your time to yoga and service to be able to appreciate it. You can see it, you know. I think more than anybody who's ever interviewed me, I think you get it. Hmm. Uh, and you see all this. Um, and uh, it's because you, you had quite experienced yourself. So I'd like to acknowledge that. Yay. Thank you, Larry. Thank you. You're welcome. Well, my friend, any, any closing comments for people who um, are listening here about and who are just like, whether, whether they have a really established yoga meditation practice or they're thinking about it, anything else? Well, um, I come back to the things that have always guided me. Be an example. You know, if you're going to be a yoga person, a yoga teacher, be an example of, uh, you know, basically we're talking about yamas and niyamas, you know, how you treat other people, how you take care of yourself. Um, and, uh, you know, if you're going to be teaching this, you need your own personal practice. So even if it's 10 minutes a day, 15, have a practice that will always keep you, you know, in it. Um, and also just know that um, after all this time, almost 40 years, it's a blessing to be a yoga teacher. It's so wonderful to inspire, you know, people and, um, you know, teach from your heart and, and, and things that you've experienced and, uh, you know, and just be yourself, you know, when you're doing these things. Okay. Wonderful, Larry. Thank wonderful. you. Yay. Well, thank you so much, my friend, for being with thank us. You, <laughs> Yay. All right. Pleasure. Can't wait to see it. Thank you. Yeah, me too. All right. Namaste. Namaste. Thank you for joining the Yoga of Healing and Awakening Summit, brought to you by the Shift Network. 
To learn more, visit yogaofhealingsummit.com. To learn more about our global programs and events, visit theshiftnetwork.com. Thank you again for joining us and for sharing this powerful journey of yoga as a divine life path.